This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Welcome to Guardian Radio AM. Today is another mashup man down Wednesday when Guardian Radio AM is joined with On the Clock with Aaron Green and we have one show. Today we have a special guest. Today we have a special guest. We have Senator Randy Roll, who is a global relations consultant, I guess, at the Ministry of Tourism. And basically he, he, he manages down down. He in sparks initiatives downtown. Like the other day, I was walking on Bay, you know, and I say, "Hey, this place needs things, right?" And then I I, I saw uh, Randy. I can call him Randy because I know him personally, and he was basically directing traffic, um, engaging tourists, speaking them on on what is happening on Bay. Then I see him doing another project on terms of pressure washing. I said, "Mr. Roll, working." Yeah, but I still have concerns. So I said, let me, let me engage him. Let me see if I can get him on the show to see what is happening on Bay Street, particularly on Bay Street East of East Street, right? And I said, man, I can bring, I can bring Randy here and, and let him explain what, what's happening, the big things. Because I, I know the, the minister mentioned that um, nine buildings have been targeted as being to be demolished. I know six buildings has already been uh, uh, broken down. I know there are uh, reorganization and restructuring happening. And I said, okay, I want to hear from the horse's mouth exactly what is happening on Bay Street. And then I, I wanted, uh, I said, Aaron, you know, we got to do this on Wednesday so I can have your ideas on what the possibilities of Bay Street can be so we can engage the, the, great, the, the good senator. So let's, with no further ado, welcome, Randy. Thanks very much for joining us. And um, what's happening on Bay? Thank you. I uh, uh, appreciate good being here. Uh, and again, you said a lot just now, CA, and so I will try my best to cover as much as, as possible. Uh, yeah, I'm a uh, senator, a part of the government. Uh, I'm working in the office of the Deputy Prime Minister, uh, who has responsibility for tourism investment and aviation. Uh, like so many people, uh, CA, the uh, Deputy Prime Minister, whose pleasure I serve at, of course, by extension, the Prime Ministers as well. And so I thank them both for the opportunity to, to be able to play a role in, in what they're trying to do. So, you know, we've heard the concerns. I, I have other responsibilities as well. Uh, but we've heard the concerns uh, of our fellow Bahamians. We also are Bahamians who love, have a passion for our country. And so with that being said, the Deputy Prime Minister, who is also a businessman uh, who happens to be in politics, uh, says, listen, I want to give focus attention to make sure that uh, we not only talk about it, because everyone has said, and, and we know it's to be true, Successive, successive governments have spoken about, okay, this is the issues, these things are happening, and yes, some have tried and made attempts to uh, make a change and bring a different, about a difference. And so my role right now as it relates to downtown is to give some focus attention from a government standpoint as to, from a tourism standpoint, because I am in tourism, mind you, there are still some regulations that Parks and beaches, road parks and beaches, still have oversight of most of it as well too. But knowing that we are, the tourism product is important to us, knowing what we want to see done, knowing that we're having record numbers of tourists, uh, especially visit downtown, the thing is, the goal is, listen, let's now jump on it. Let's put some focus attention to see how we can best change and how we can best develop and enhance the overall experience. And so for, and this is a part, part of the role that I just received a couple of months ago, so it's not been 
the entire year or, or whatever time the government has been in. But uh, so I use the first couple of weeks uh, in this rule to sort of get an assessment. And you know, you, you listen to what's being said. Uh, it also requires you walking the area, you getting the feel from a customer from a guest experience standpoint. And so, you know, and of course, you know, you know you're know, you a very famous and popular uh, social media guru. So, you know, a lot of times when you want to know what's going on, just visit CA's uh, page. But uh, so having said all that, we, we identified some key areas that we can fix right away. And so the goal is to, yeah, it's a long process, but let's start somewhere. And so it's a phased approach where the things, that the low-hanging fruit that we could adjust, we want to be able to adjust. Uh, as we move on, uh, then we will do more. Uh, and so we've, for example, people talk about Bay Street being dirty. Uh, it needs to clean. Uh, and I agree, CA. Uh, I think we all agree. I think that's a common thing that every Bahamian says, listen, we want to do more. Uh, grow, us growing up, uh, Bay Street is where you go, where you went for Christmas shopping, where you went to do a number of things. Nowadays, it's, I mean, everybody goes to the mall. So what, what initiative has, is the Ministry of Tourism, and you mentioned parks and beaches too, I'm not sure who is responsible for making sure Bay Street, in general, is clean. Right. Despite the buildings. We ain't talking about the buildings yet. Yes. Just clean. Right. The sidewalks, the the, the, the wrappers, the, the garbage pickup, mm -hmm. the, the shrubbery. Well, who is responsible for that, and what is Ministry of Tourism doing to, to fix that or address those issues? Well, uh, in past budgets, it's, it's something that fell under parks and beaches. However, we have gone back to the days where tourism is everybody's business. And so what we have done is we have made it our business. And we have heard what our guest concerns are as it relates to cleaning Bay Street. And so we have taken up the initiative to engage uh, some stakeholders to see how best that we can help in this effort in getting it cleaned. Like I told you, my first couple of weeks on the job, as it relates to Bay Street, I said, let me walk down, let me experience for myself. Uh, and many may not know the CA, but in the entire downtown Bay Street, there are only 21 garbage bins. And so off the back, I realized, that, listen, uh, we need more garbage bins. But so, so we looked at that aspect and, and we're going to make some adjustments as it relates there. And then there is no city management uh, at this stage. That, that's something that the government is looking to. Uh, we have a draft bill that I think we will present uh, before the end of summer. Hopefully it's at the AG's office. But that city management bill will talk to some more Pacifics as it relates to it as well too. What I mean and why that's important is, for example, going back to the garbage. Uh, we, there is parks and beaches have people who collect at, I think, 6 a.m. They come back maybe at 1 p.m. and like three other times. But there are some Bay Street uh, vendors and persons who have stores down there that may take their garbage out at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. And so whilst the collection has started already, these persons are putting it out at all different times. Guests are going to see that. Guests are going to walk past it. Sometimes it's, it's, it's going to create a smell and other things such as that, that that is something that we can manage. And so in coordinating with the relevant stakeholders, okay, how do we now create this process that we avoid that. Again, we have some, uh, I, I don't want to say vagrants, but you know, some people who we have some un We have some unhoused people and we have some people with mental instability that are having difficulties. Uh, we, I guess, uh, we, it's referenced in this article uh, by Chester Cooper, uh, DPM promising downtown projects presented to government 27th of April 23rd. And I, want, I just want to say that he uh, expresses the same degree of concern. Like, 
how are we going to approach this particular issue? How do we uh, find a solution? And the question I want to put on the table to ensure that we find a solution without effectively criminalizing people. Yeah. Most certainly. And that's extremely important. It has, I guess, become such where some people have become immune to it. Yeah. So they're there and they don't see it. But you know that they're there because sometimes uh, Bay Street is rank. Yeah. Or, or, or there are other things that happen and you realize, okay, there is an issue that we need to find a way to address. Mm -hmm. So that means now that I must, again, bring to the table, reach out to social services. Right, because if, if, if the solution relies only in the hands of tourism, right, mm -hmm. then we end up criminalizing people by using legislation and policy to remove them from the space. But partnering with social services, the Ministry of Health and Wellness, we should be finding solutions to house people then we can deal with the issues that they face in. Yes. Yeah. So, Relocate in house. Yeah. Exactly. And, and like in the Senate a couple of uh, uh, months ago, uh, and the government has, has I guess, passed a, a bill. I think it was the mental the health new, bill. The new mental health, health bill. Act, which, yes. which, again, shows some initiative the government is taking to try and, and do, do that. I said I made a recommendation that I want to see the name Sandilands change to Health and Wellness Rehabilitation Center. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, again, when myself and CAO fellas were growing up, it was, Sandalins was not a cool place. It was like, listen. There was a lot of stigma. Stigma. And, and, and still so tell stigma jokes, yeah. Still uh, uh, exist. Today, yeah. And so you may have a very light mental illness that can be fixed. But because of the stigma, Right. You're or, not going to go and seek help. Or we realize that you actually are not mentally ill, but your condition is ex exacerbated by your state of homelessness. Okay. But we have a caller here who wants to engage you, um, Randy. Mm -hmm. um, caller, producer Patrick, call her through so we can c continue the conversation. Oh. Aaron, you press that button there for me. He's got it. He's got it. Hello. Go ahead. Go ahead. Good morning, Mrs. C.A. Nori. Yeah, go ahead. Morning. Morning, Randy. Morning. This is your Uncle Vince. This is Sparky. Hey, Sparky. How you do? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, enjoy listening to you, too. All right. Um, yeah, congratulations. So, well, first of all, I didn't get to see you since back then, but um, condolences goes out to the passing of your mother, Ken Karen, to you and you and Kevin. Appreciate well, it. I didn't get to see you. Mm -hmm. The things with you that got me out of the way. But um, continue to do the work you're doing, sir. I know you're trying your best. And um, see you soon, bro. Take care. All right. Thanks, man, Sparky. Appreciate you. I see we have another call on the line. Caller. Hello. Good morning. You on there? Morning, Aaron. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? Good uh, morning. Morning. Uh, sorry, but I can't do it on the radio. Same time. No problem. Yeah, I would just listen to this show. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering, well, why are we get focusing on Bay Street? Follow me? Okay, and so you're saying why are we focusing on Bay Street versus... At the 21st century, we're not building a city. I mean, the whole entire area of Wolf Road, from East Street, Shirley Street, all the areas should be looking like Bay Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Parking East Street, Camp Broad, all these area in a corner of just different, um, different, um, different setting. I got you. I, you, I, you understand what I'm saying? No, no, I. That, 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 hold on, hold on, Aaron. I finish. That not building a city. But in the city, that's why I ask for local government, where each district could say, I want how I want my area to be. I want Wolf Road and Camp Broad. Look, that's like Bay Street. I got you. Pumpkin, I, I got you. I appreciate. I appreciate what you're saying. You're coming in from the perspective of a local government, right? No, um, I come. No, no, only that area. I come but, into the area the whole entire. No, I got you. I got you. Pumpkin. I want to see my tour. I want to see tours all over. Okay. When I, when I go to France and it's all, 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 all I got you, Pumpkin. Let me let me take it from here. Sure. 
Sure. Thank you. Let me take it from here. And so one of the questions I uh, had been tooling around with, right, is, uh, uh, well, let me start here, Pumpkin Eater. We're talking about Bay Street. That's why we're talking about Bay Street. What I'm hoping is that the reimagining of Little Nassau, the revitalization of downtown, becomes not just a model for development, but a catalyst, right, for development. But we're talking specifically about tourism. So I appreciate the local government intersection, because I have a question here that, that delves into the balance of things, right? But we're not talking about community development or city development. We're talking about Bay Street. What comes out of that question is, when we reimagine Little Nassau, are we reimagining a new city? Or are we re are we imagining a new tourist product? So, so let me engage yeah. Randy with that. Does the Ministry of Tourism has an Im a view, a, a Im like like Aaron used a, a a visual imagination of what Bay Street should look like, or the goal points it it needs to be look like this, and we're working towards that. Um, I'm, I'm certain they, they do. Uh, again, I'm in, in, in my capacity here today. I, I work, like I said, at uh, Ministry of Tourism. However, you know, the spokesperson is the Director General along with the Minister. Mm -hmm. uh, but they do. And, and again, too, we, we look at it from the eyes of the guests. Uh, we uh, guests come here for a particular experience. And it is our view to make sure that our guests receive that experience whilst they're here. Now, pause. I, I wanted to say this. Okay. Traditionally, mm -hmm. foreigners sit down and think, well, what do the, our guests want, right? And they imagine what they want. And then they bring that vision to us. What I'm going to say to you is we got to start Agreed. telling them now, I totally agree. What we have to match is their expectations, right? Most certainly. Absolutely. We go in and we say, what are they expecting? What is the feeling that they want to have when they, when they pick their head up and they see green and aquamarine out that cruise ship window, right? Mm -hmm. that, that expectation. But we got to change that paradigm Most and tell them this is what you get when you get here. I see we have another caller here. Producer, patch that caller through. I got it. Go ahead, caller. Can you hear us? You doing? Do well. Good, good. You know, I don't think anybody has an idea as to what Bay Street is supposed to look like. Okay? And I think playing around with the idea of visitors' expectations is like a rabbit trail. Bay Street has to come out of the imaginations of the humans. And those imaginations have to be embedded in the cup in the culture that we have already. Now, anything else is going to be like a, a blind charm or a counterfeit. Okay, we need to probably go back to um, 1968, Jumbe Village in Coconut Grove. Every year, that thing got bigger and broader and more Bahamian. Now, that's probably a good template for dealing with what we want to give our visitors as a Bahamian experience. You know, if we can experience it for ourselves, it's not going to mean anything of it. Uh, now, Carla, let me ask you a question. You said Jumbe Village, Coconut Grove. Tell me where that is. I mean, I'm not being facetious. Tell me where that is. Coconut Grove Avenue? Yes. It started on Market Street, mm -hmm. and it headed east. Okay. okay. So watch, now, watch this. I really, I really appreciate what it is you're saying, right? Where is the average young person supposed to find these experiences? How do they tap into what it is that has become a central thread in your life? and your vision of the Bahamas. Where did y'all document, where are the videos? Where's the write-ups? Where's the music? Where are no, they going no, to the, um, the um, all history department of UB mm -hmm. is currently documenting all this information. Okay? Uh, currently. It's available. No, okay. it's not. Now, 
it's not available. They're working on it. And the question is, what's the accessibility? I really appreciate the contribution you made, but people can only turn back to a history that they uh, lived, experienced, or can connect to. Okay, okay, okay. Anyway, let's get down to the real issue here. Yeah. Bay Street isn't a problem because of politics. Okay. Two competing groups, the politicians and the businessmen who own most of Bay Street cannot get together. Okay? Now, what went wrong in 1968 is that Jumbo Village became too successful and it was moved west to the next side of Blue Road on the, on the old dump site. Okay? Now, after a while, it lost its appeal, and it was mowed into the ground. We cannot let, we can't afford to let the politics or the government or the politicians have so much say in what our cultural expressions are going to be. I, I agree. But, I agree with okay. you, Carla. I want to say thank you. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you for your contribution. I think the way that we do that, though, like we're not going to place blame, because um, I know Mr. Rule too. I don't like cutting eye at people I know. Is that we, the people, have to create mechanisms to take on these jobs? If 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 we can't leave the preservation of culture up to the politicians, that doesn't mean you just sit down and say, "Why don't the government recognize me as the leading stakeholder in culture?" You build institutions to do your work to support the government and tell the government this is what we want to do. You don't have to spend a million dollars with a consultancy paper. We've done the work. Here it is. And going back to Randy, as you traverse Bay Street, because I know you do this right. almost every day, yes, right? Sir. What are the tourists saying uh, in terms of the Bay Street product and by extension the product of the Bahamas? What they want uh, and that what you think that you can immediately address? Okay, certainly, uh, again, uh, they talk about the authentic Bahamian product. They want more things to do. Uh, certainly. Uh, and so then we have to show them that the authentic Bahamian product is American because Bahamians want American things to do, which is why they are mainly American looking things to do. Look how you challenging Randy. No, no. I, I like that. I I'm just said. Right yeah, 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 yeah. But I want to write that down. Authentic. Yeah. But, but anyway, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and, and again, uh, what they tell us. And their service is, listen, we want some things to do. Uh, we have to, as a nation, find uh, activities for persons to want to come off the cruise ships mm -hmm. and want to experience what it is that we have to offer. Mm -hmm. And so that means, and, and what the uh, I think the Deputy Prime Minister and his vision is trying to do is, listen, so we want to create the uh, uh, incubator center. We want to speak to the other stakeholders to figure out what it is that, you know, else that they have interest in doing. Some tours, I think some people have created, been creative, Bahamians have been creative over the last couple of weeks and created some tours that people look forward to. The, uh, not just the scooters, the ATVs, the, the, the Jeep Wranglers. Uh, we, we, we hear a lot now about this graveyard tour uh, and, and people look forward to that. What is Hold it? On, pause, Go pause. Ahead. I don't think you all understand the potential of the graveyard tour. First mm -hmm. of all, Bahamas Historical Society is, is one of your stakeholders in that discussion. Grace Turner, our own Bahamian historian, has just written a book a couple of years ago on uh, detailing the history of, of, of cemeteries, graveyards, and burial practices in the African Bahamas and in the Bahamas. The thing is fascinating. But it's not Ministry of Tourism's job to create the tours. No, I agree with you. No, no, I agree with you. It's not. It's not. Their job is to facilitate access between the guests and the people providing the tours and to ensure that the resources are available 
right, for them to do that. And then there are a couple of other things, right, like, like, like dead quick, tourism has to liaison with Royal Bahamas to poli police force to ensure that the, the people who are using the ATVs to go on these tours, self-guided and guided, the proper signage, the rules are being followed, all of those things. Right after the callers, we'll talk about partnership, what partnerships okay, that tourism definitely. is doing. Like you said, the police force, I want to talk about. Which is super engaging. important. Yes. Okay, um, let's patch our caller through, um, producer. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning uh, to your guests. Yeah, you know, uh, Aaron, uh, the gentleman that called before me, he was speaking about the Jumbe Village, right? Mm -hmm. And so maybe he might be a bit older than me. I'll be 59 in August, but I barely could remember the, the section that he was talking about to the West. But what I did remember mm -hmm. very vividly as a young man, which made all of, all of us feel proud, it really was the talk of the town for young people in the inner city. As a matter of fact, I went to Mabel Walker, so we was able to which was really a part of the pond, but they had built a school there. And so I would have entered Mabel Walker in 69 or 70, right? And so I remember when they built that, that section, and we was ecstatic, you know, you couldn't wait to go in it, but what, what happened is most people don't realize the pond, you know, I get a picture of how big the pond was for my Grammy, who, who lived to see almost 100. Uh -huh. So I had an idea what, what the area looked like as far as land reclamation. Now, the thing is, the, 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 the pond extended, all right, you see where National Insurance is? That's, that's where the... Jumbe Village was. Uh -huh. So the city dump was always there. But I could remember it, like they had the little bridges you walk over. It's like, like you, we walked through the gardens and they had art, of, art, art and crafts and they had sessions and all that. There was a, like an auditorium to the, to, the, to the south. And it was it was like a good, it was a recreational area, like a lot of green spaces there. In. Mm -hmm. So that's what I remember. And then there's some festivals there. And I remember the, 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 the Coconut Jimmy and the Crab and Doe and all those type of out island type people from the out islands would come and so it, it, it had a great potential. So I, I bear in with him, too. I was wondering why, why it was uh, discontinued. I, I really couldn't see the reason for it. But I have a question for, you said this guy is from the Ministry of Tourism. Mr. Randy Roll, who is in the office of the Prime Minister, uh, but he's rep working with tourism. Yeah, but, 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 but I, I just want to get this in because this is very important. And so in the same they talk about tourism, I'm kind of vexed because I go by what I observe, not narratives, especially status quo, because I draw the steps avidly. And... I am disappointed in the fact, I don't know if there's listening to the people, he's saying listen to the doers, listen to the doers of course. But what I'm saying is that the, the local environs, I run the steps, the steps, the, the, the waterfall uh, hasn't been working for a couple of years now. So I can understand that because the way out they might have to hoon who out the rocks in order to get to the, the ancient pipes. But what they should have done was to drill some holes to get rid of the stagnant water that is really room for pathogens. And, and, and that is inglorious and it's smelly and mosquitoes and all that. So. Let's get it together and just walk on the ground and do some observations. The, the 66 steps is, 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 is a common site visited by tourists. I look, I look, I see the not, not just that, 52, I want to say thank you very much, but wait till you hear my idea from Fort to the Fort Hill adventure well, tourism in the inner city. They don't listen to us, man. We're still on the don't, plantation. Don't mind Everybody that. Hey, Aaron, we're still on the prison pathetic plantation. My, That's my outlook. I ain't worried with nobody. Your, your, your points are taken. I uh, just want to make a quick uh, response out. Uh, the 66 steps, again, it's a tourist uh, attraction, and, and I agree. Uh, at present, you know, that, that fall, not falls on the tourism directly. Uh, it falls on the, uh, again, uh, AMMC. However, that is uh, duly noted, and it's notes that I can take down and, again, get to the relevant authority. But through having conversations like this, dialogue such as this, uh, the relevant stakeholders are able to get an understanding of where the areas of concerns are. And so it's about, for us, partnerships. It's about engaging the stakeholders. Like I said, tourism is everybody's business. Mm -hmm. And so unless we all start talking about it, we're then going to now know where are the areas of concerns and be able to address them. Okay, let's mm -hmm. engage the next caller. And so we can uh, address uh, Randy. Go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? I can always along with you and your guests here. And of course, I would. We need justice law and order in this country, but it sounds like nobody has the vision for this country. Now, when it comes to the Queen's staircase, that need a lot of repairs because the uh, the uh, rails in which you hold on to get up under underneath the rails are uh, are corroded. So, in other words, those those rails need to uh, change. Be so, to the uh, the water tower mm -hmm. need a uh, vast repair. Nobody said anything about that. Uh, you know, one time ago, the people used to come and go 
up, up the water tower and look all around this country. Okay, they cannot do that now. So you need to fix that. Other part is Bay Street. Okay, see, I'm on Bay Street. And I was on Bay Street from a little boy. Let me show you something. Uh, they had all sort of ent entertainment for 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 um, uh, for the tourists on Bay Street. Right now, the tourists come on Bay Street, and I watch them. I cannot see physically, so I don't want anybody to be facetious. But I I observe them. Right? They would stand up by Scotia Bank and try to figure out where to go, what to do. And the only place they could go is walk down to the straw market. You need to put some. Thank entertaining you. businesses are there, like some night cl some some clubs would open day and day and night and put live band in there, Absolutely. whereby the people would be be able to communicate with the people. That, okay. That's that's uh, in the works. And, and secondly, right? No, no, Brendan, we got to go. I got I got three more calls, and I want to address what you said. I would say thank you very much. One of the things that we do need is a central place to access information. It makes no sense that we work on all of these ideas, put my Fort Hill um, athletic course idea, adventure tourism into place, if people don't know how to connect and they can't connect quickly and easily. I may not connect through the cruise industry's communications channels or their tour system. I may get off the boat and see it and want to do it myself. How do we then bring all of this information into one space for stakeholders, tourists, and be general Bahamians? Okay, thanks. Again, uh, like I said, there, there, there is plans in place mm -hmm. to, to move the needle on some stuff. Uh, but I believe that uh, what is important uh, is to engage the stakeholders. Yeah. Uh, the more conversations you have about it, uh, yeah. it gives you the because, Bremen, because, because Bremen. politics, remember now, is about the people. They talk about politicians uh, versus people. No, politicians are the people. Mm -hmm. uh, we live here in this country as well. Uh, we want to see better Bahamas for ourselves. And so what it simply means for me is, listen, let us have more conversations. Because once we make a decision, then you say, okay, that's a decision the politicians make. Mm. But if you come to the people getting the information, I mean, so... Yeah, and I think Brayman makes a good point about disability access as well. Oh, okay, sorry. I'm no, no, we, we miss that, the, right. the railings and the condition yes, of the railings. definitely. And, and what makes the place accessible. Uh, Ian, quickly, and then we get to this call. My question, Mr. Roll, is um, thinking about the tourism modeling going forward, right, mm -hmm. and the accessibility of young entrepreneurs or business persons downtown. Um, is there anything in going to be in place of, of those particular vendors other than just the straw market vendors? Because we know that the port has a variety of things that they're looking into doing. How is that going to affect those models that we currently have outside, preferably cruise ships sending members and so forth and saying that, okay, um, don't leave the port. Or we only can be responsible if you're in the port. What happens to that, that particular business ventures that are on the outside of the port? Or do we allow them to do that? And if they're now, one more question, and if they are now coming into the Bahamian ports, and I don't know if the boats are registered here or if they're registered somewhere else, but the question is, do we have um, proper truck pumping trucks that are going to you be utilizing that services in terms of abstracting the feces well, from the boats? I would ask a better question. How do we build capacity to ensure that Bahamian vendors get that business? Yes. The, right, the cruise ships are coming, and... It's my birthday. <laughs> Cruise ships are coming, but how do we best place Bahamians to take advantage of and benefit from first opportunities? We need, we need the, the, the tourism director general now to come on the show to go into detail. About those. Like, like I said, like Randy mentioned before, that that's, they're the spokes, spokesman on the official plan yeah. for tourism. But, but I want to talk about, I see the call is called, and we can come to you right next. Um, who do you partner with? Who who is being partnered with to bring the into fruition this well, tourism plan? Right, and to create the environment in which the plan can. Uh, again, it's the major stakeholders. Uh, first of all, for example, even before I get into the the, the Royal Bahamas Police Force, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we I've had discussions with them. Someone mentioned about things to do downtown. Yeah. Well, I can say that. The commissioner of police, the new commissioner of police, have, have, have spoken to us, and, and we 
will be able to have some of the police band, the Royal Bahamas Police Band perform on a day, the prison band, the Defense Force band. These are bands where we can now plug into... Yeah, because we, what we're going to do is east of East Street, we're going to create a performance space between uh, the boardwalk and Shirley Street uh, with Dowdswell Street. No That's side. part of the plan? Listen, that's a part of Mr. Nuri. That's a part of the plan. <laughs> no drivers. And zone. listen, we're going to have uh, those side streets. And so from day markets to night markets and mini concerts, we're going to place the Royal Bahamas well, Police Force. from here? Man, don't worry about what me and the but, Chichanis be doing in the bush at night. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's Aaron, where so, the ideas are. So what happened to our local artists like the Gino D's and... Well, the, no, but this and, is and what... And listen, this person. is... Uh, and they will not be left. I mean, you know, Aaron probably knows more than I do, but uh, no, no, it's just me <laughs> in the bush. It's just, just me okay. in the bush. No, no, but seriously though, uh, but, yeah. but but that is the type of vision uh, that you know many see based you know, on. Aaron is a, a stakeholder. Uh, there are several companies. Yeah, we have the cruise port opening. You know, in, in a couple of weeks. I think four or six weeks or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so it means now that everyone needs to get on board. Uh, you talked about young entrepreneurs. Yeah. I can tell you that that is a mandate of the Deputy Prime Minister. He is creating the, the incubator center that's going to be east of East Street. Is to be able to encourage and promote uh, businesses such as that for those who are in that space. To let them know that listen, there is also a place for you, and the government is prepared to work with you to create. See, I talked about these tours. We need some people to create them, and uh, there are other businesses that we don't know about yet because they've not been, uh, uh, they've not come out, but. We're going to find them. We want to find them. We want to engage and them. This is what the we want to is about. exactly. Listen, how do you now play your role in making sure that we get this product to where we want to, where we want it to be? Uh, I would say, you know, for instance, uh, what young entrepreneurs need to know, right, is like to get a sense of what potential could happen. So I just can throw out some ideas, right? Uh, the straw market. How do we reimagine the straw market? If we imagine, if we presume that the highest end artisans are going to be in the port, right? Um, Dowswell, I, I have the idea, dining on Dowswell. I think we should so. turn the whole of Dowswell into a, a foodie district, right? And then the side corners from the boardwalk uh, to Dowswell and then to Shirley and then the section without Dowswell, right? Should host mini concerts in the nighttime featuring your... Local artists. Right, and your, so you have both culture and uh, culture and art and music, right? All three at the same time uh, with local artists, different genres of music, right? There's uh, East of East Street. The Eastern, East, the Eastern Esplanade can be a daytime festival site, right? Um, from Fort to Fort to the Fort Hill, from historical tours to adventure tours. Right, but you have to give a concept that people can then plug into, and these young entrepreneurs could say, "Okay, that's an area that they are looking into." Go on, man. And I see we need to take a break now, and I see the callers on the phone, and and, and Randy has an appointment for twelve, so I can give him this uh, five seconds just to wrap up, and then we'll just continue the discussion and, and at the end right, of the break. Hopefully, you tell us where people can submit their ideas, where they can plug in to the the, the generation of ideas. All right, well, certainly, thank you uh, so much. Uh, again, uh, there are a number of things. What we want to do and what we have decided is, listen, uh, we, we're taking an aggressive approach to make sure that uh, we put boots on the ground, uh, we make sure that we just not talk about it, but we do some action. Uh, just tomorrow, uh, I have a walkabout with the uh, a, 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 a demolition task force that uh, the Deputy Prime Minister has put in place. And this is to make sure that there are a number of derelict vehicles in the downtown space. We want to make sure that we, we, we clean up. We, we, we clean up. We've also spoken with uh, the Ambassador Jamal Rule. Uh, there are some areas that we can place some murals. Uh, we can make it look and feel uh, like, 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 you know, a an, good art, place. an art district. Yeah, right? An art district. Like and so we're going to also engage not only Jamal, but he's going to go there and we're going to engage the creatives. 
to say, listen, this is your city, man. Re let's get involved. The East, yeah, the let, let's all. And so my thing is, listen, uh, it takes everyone to come on board to, yeah, we have a plan, certainly, but where you can fit in, where you can plug in, let's do it. Let's stop talking about it. Let's be about it. Let's make sure that we create something that's, uh, uh, please, I mean, so great, great for all. The Tourism Development Corporation, Bahamas Association of Shore Excursions, the uh, Bahamas uh, Hotel and Tour Alliance, are these spaces that people who are interested should start connecting to, getting a sense of what programming, what um, stakeholder consultation is taking place? Right. Okay, and, and develop their ideas from there. Please. And, 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 and so, you know, I, I just, again... Like I said, we're partnering. We're gonna make. We're gonna be announcing uh, shortly some major partnerships that are persons who have come about to say, "Listen, we want to help. We, we we've heard about this situation for many years. We want to assist you." Uh, okay, we're tired of just talking about it, but we want to put boots on the ground, and so. Uh, we're going to reach out, uh, you know, my office. We're going to bring corporate Bahamas, Bay Street. You know, we want commerce back. Uh, we want pedestrianized traffic. We want persons who can, if you want to shop downtown, you can find somewhere to park. There's no parking down there now. And so if you frustrated because you can't find somewhere to park, you're going to go to the mall. And, and, and so all of that it affects, again, tourism is everybody's business. Uh, we're in the tourism space, but we want to make sure that, listen, not only for the tourists, we want to do it for ourselves because we're Bahamians, but, you know, we want all parties and stakeholders involved uh, so that this, this is something that we can build and, and change together. Well, we'll just break with that, and I appreciate that, and we'll engage the callers, and then we have Erin with her ideas. I know Randy, you're rushing off to a meeting. I see you packing up, um, but we're going. This is Guardian Radio in the AM. This is a mash up man down Wednesday. Uh, we're talking tours, and we're talking Bay Street in particular, and we will be right back. Celebrate our 50th independence with a golden jubilee. The Road to 50 presents the inaugural Jubilee Day. It's a day to celebrate the Bahamas and the Bahamian people in grand style. We're jump-starting the Independence Party on Friday, May 5th at the Southern Recreation Grounds. Come and explore the cultural village from 4 to 9 p.m. And take your seats by 6.30 to witness a fantastic cultural show. It's all about the black, gold, and aquamarine. Wear your colors to show your pride. Schools all all across the Bahamas will be taking part. This day is made to celebrate you. It's Jubilee Day, Friday, May 5th. For more information, visit CelebrateBahamas.com or go on social media and type in Celebrate I'm Bahamas. Proud to be a Bahamian. I'm proud to be a Bahamian. I'm proud to be a Bahamian. Yes, I gave this land to me. Love the show? Want to give your support? Become a sponsor today. Call 302-2300 for our rates and packages. That's 302-2300. Become a sponsor on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The sixth edition of the Bahamas Games are on the way. July 7th through the 15th, get ready for inter-island sporting competition in the spirit of unity and camaraderie. Which island is going to win? It's the Bahamas Games. Our nation, our talent, our games. And look out for the B Games crew coming to your island soon. For more information, call 809-1242. Or visit thebahamasgames.org. Welcome back to Garden Radio AM with C.A. Nuri. Of course, I have Aaron Green here from on, from on the Clock. And, of course, we have Ian Munnings, who is our regular 
guest host on Wednesdays, and we were talking Bay Street. We were talking earlier with, to Senator Randy Roll about uh, what is happening on Bay and who he's partnering with, and of course we have ideas on what should be happening, and we are talking about reimagining Bay Street. We're also talking about having some kind of default that we, the Bahamian people, can engage tourism officials as to where what we see Bay Street as, the possibility in the future of Bay Street, and of course I see the callers. So what we're going to do is go to the callers first, and then we will uh, engage the callers as to uh, given ideas or to Ministry of Tourism of what Bay Street should look like. So, producer, pass the caller through. Go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? Caller, can you hear me? No? Let's go to the next caller there. Caller, can you hear me? There's nothing again? Two callers? Okay. So, uh, Aaron, before uh, uh, Rodney left, yeah. right, you were citing some ideas on extension of Bay Street. And of course, Randy was talking about the management of Bay Street in terms of what they can do now to using the resources they have, right? And you were talking about having a, a depot of some sort where behemoths can give their ideas on where they see Bay Street. And one of the two things I, I find in the conversation is the mixture of several other ministries. Mm -hmm. Tourism is one, yeah. right? Ministry of Culture, which is not tourism. Right is a completely separate thing. And you were talking about cultural aspects, and I'm not sure how Ministry of Tourism is partnering, partnering with Ministry of Culture to bring about those, those ideas and concepts that, that you and said. Be, and beaches and parks. And then you, they, Randy talked about right. beaches and parks, management and cleaning and, 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 and grooming of Bay Street. I didn't know that Bay Street management is so complex that so many other entities. Uh, entities are involved, and perhaps that's why there is a delay mm -hmm. and in terms of how do we improve the product. Mm -hmm. um, and so the the cry for local government, right, is is it, it, it's ancillary. Uh, I think that you do need a special management uh, vehicle to manage something as complex as the downtown area, you know, uh, one of the questions we have to ask is well, what are the boundaries of the downtown area, right? Where is it, are we dropping all the way to Shirley Street? Are we going all the way to Coral World? I like um, the boardwalk. Is the boardwalk going to is going to delineate what is downtown? Still talking about this boardwalk talk. You see any boardwalk being built? Oh, that's happening. That's happening. Yes, you happening. see any boardwalk being being, being built? Last time you've been to Bay Street. Uh, and where's the Bay Street? Where, where's it being built? You right. can't see it on the other side of the Bay. On Thank the bay. You. You, you know what that is? That's uh, what the hotel is. That's number one Bay Street building that boardwalk. That's not Ministry of Tourism. Where no, you seeing this boardwalk? Where, where the port, where the port is now, where the where the tourists are coming off. Uh -huh. That particular area where the taxi drivers are now parking. That's not the boardwalk. No, no, no. The way they now are parking. You, well, you, you, but you that's mean, not the boardwalk. No, I'm saying to you, when the back where the taxis are now parking. That'll be where the old cabinet building used to be. Yeah. In the back of those buildings that are that are currently there, where um, Kelly's, I think, building had burned down, that area there going straight forward to to the bridge. That is the board. So I think they, no, so nothing is being built. They, they don't mind that. They, that's what their intention is. Is from Cornwall. They intend to build a whole hospital too. You don't, don't and a new prison. We're talking about money. We're not talking about but I, this intention thing you're talking about. But so I listen. From boardwalk to board, you know why it's serious. You know it's serious because the business, the property owners, are in serious conversation with the government yes. about it. The property builders who are not building the building. Well, I mean, they tell them we we not going to to turn our businesses around until we have some substantive actions and substantive statements on the I'd, way forward. I'd like to say something on that right now. Yeah, you all living hope alone. No, no, I'd like to say something on that. Um, and they're engaging the government in conversations to say a serious conversation to whether or not or how they're going to go forward. My question, conversation. My, but my question to that, I'm glad you said 30 years. My question to that is that we're talking about property taxes to be paid from all the, the other persons that don't have a building downtown. Every property downtown is worth more than a million dollars. So my question is, if, did they pay their taxes? They Was the that's, taxes paid? That's even more complicated than the boardwalk. No, that shouldn't be complicated. But the is, thing about it is, is I have in fact that they are paying their taxes. Are you sure? All paid up. Are you sure of that? No, I'm sure of that. Who made them pay up? The the is, they have the money and they paid it. That's why no, there's no problem. Because they have the money that yes, means they paid it. No, they did pay it. So, so let's say they did pay it. Now what's the next issue? Let's say they didn't pay it. Then the government would enforce it. Let's go back to ideas because <laughs> you just blew my mind just now with that one. Um, another question is, so what, what are the bounds of it, right? Um, I say dining on Dowdswell. You turn that into a foodie district. And when you say we, who you mean by we? 
the, the stakeholders. Uh, okay, the balancing act, the balancing act, which is going to be um, the Bahamian government, the Bahamian, Bahamian government don't own a the, restaurant, the Bahamian imagination, the cruise industry, and the mega resorts. So we got to find a balancing act before those four entities, right? You see, when Pumpkin Eater called in, Pumpkin Eater raised the sort of question of um, is are we de- neglecting the rest of New Providence for Nassau, right? I, I, I came at it from a different way. How do we make downtown a part of the hotel and cruise industry's product and not a competing but, product? But how are you going to build your restaurant on my property? How are you going to buy a restaurant on my And put it on build a house. I mean, they have a call in here. <laughs> you want to make money. No, there's a call in here. Let's pass that caller through. Producer, pass the caller through. Go ahead, caller. I see we got to go, so it's to be quick. This has got to be quick, caller. Good day, Mr. Murray. Good day. Then I look and I see all those cars are parked on Bay Street all through the corners. Years ago, that's what they had Elizabeth Avenue for, where people with the parking spaces are still there. The people who go down Bay Street, only people who are delivering things should be parked on Bay Street. The straw vendors, they should put them in some of those buildings east of, of, of um, the East Street. Use some of them in those buildings that those people don't want to fix them. And they can easily fix those buildings up so the government has authority to take those buildings from them. From there, give them authority to have the mall, Bay Street, was closed down. Have the prisoners clean the steps. They are doing nothing to help the country. They used to clean, clean um, um, the, the, the government house. Grants had a lot of fruits and vegetables they used to grow. When I was growing up, I'm a senior citizen. They give every constituency, they give over the hill to the young men who had a, had a box cart made with one wheel. And they would push these wheels all over Nassau. That's why we were the cleanest in, in, in the world. But they, as soon as the PLP, the, the black government come to power, that stopped. We got to stop being so petty and basically can be better. Yes, Spread the straw vendors in those buildings. Yes, have sir. entertainments and stop using the police bond all the time. You have these guys who have lost their jobs. They can organize new bonds if they see they have the potential to do it. I appreciate that. I appreciate the producer for letting the sermon go on. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much, ma'am.